you look at god he stores up all his anger and pours it out on the cross not on us right see anger controlling anger you see some people because they could not control their anger they have ruined their families the peace and joy in the home has been ruined because out of anger they spoke some terrible words i've been talking about resurrection power thinking about resurrection power just immersed in this right now when you are immersed in this you get a sense that with this power you need to do great and mighty things but you come here to the bible and it seems to say you do this what should you do with resurrection power you do i felt a great disappointment to be honest with you i'll just tell you you know because see usually when i read the bible i read with an open mind right let god speak to me anything right and i am ready to accept but when it came to this subject i did not read with a open mind you know how i read i read expecting god to tell me that you need to do something great something bombastic something that is you know flamboyant something that is grand and big and huge and great because we are talking about the grandest power there is with that power if he has to tell me to do something it has to be something great that is the expectation with which i was find trying to find out what should i do and then i go and read in ephesians in colossians in philippians in thessalonians in 1 peter 2 peter 1 john 2 john 3 john every book in the new testament they all say live this kind of like life with the resurrection <laughs> totally not what i expected i expected something like go heal the sick with resurrection go raise the dead with resurrection power okay i expect you know especially uh, recently people have been talking you know uh, they're saying you know like what ministry are you doing they're looking at our church and saying what what big ministry are you doing you are just your pastor is just standing there you know preaching the bible week after week uh, what that is nothing that is just an ordinary level of ministry look at us we are going out to the street healing the sick that is the ministry we are doing and they're saying you know look at us we are some people are saying you know we are raising the dead we are doing lazarus resurrections 
We are raising people from the dead. Your ministry is nothing, you know. Our ministry is much. Look at the power in our ministry. So, you know, when you hear things like that, you feel somewhat, you know, discouraged. You know, what, what ministry are we doing after all? So, when I came to this topic, I began to think, okay, now here's the chance to do something great. God is now going to show me that with the resurrection power, you go to the biggest hospital in town, you heal all the sick, make them close down the hospital. Now, that's some impressive show of power. Or you go to the biggest cemetery in town, you raise everybody from the dead, Lazarus was nothing, we'll show some resurrection power. See, I was expecting something like that to come, but it didn't come. I searched and searched, it didn't come. The emphasis on miracles and signs and wonders, see, miracles is there, signs and wonders are there, but these things seem to be far more emphasized in the New Testament. And when it comes to this particular matter of resurrection power, it is particularly emphasizing saying, with resurrection power, you need to do these things. And I just got very disappointed. I don't know, maybe you also are feeling disappointed. What is this three weeks? He just, you know, shouted and preached, uh, resurrection, power, all this, this and that. Now finally he's come to this and he's saying, you know, what you have to do with this power is you have to put away sin, you have to you know, overcome your anger, you have to show love, you have to, you know. Seems like ordinary things. It's like taking the air out of the balloon, you know. You think something great is coming, finally it's like... It's like a movie ending, having a horrible ending. Three weeks of good resurrection power teaching, now what are you doing now, you know? Well, I also thought like that only. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, the word is right and we are wrong always, right? You gotta come to that, first, first you gotta think the word is right and we are wrong. <laughs> and then you start thinking, well, why does the word say like that? You know, why does the New Testament, did the apostles not do miracles? Did they not raise the dead? Did they not know the power? Did they, they could have eased, they believed in miracles more than, you know, most people today, you see. They were doing miracles left and right. Why didn't they say with the resurrection power, go do miracles, go raise the dead, go do something grand like that? Why didn't they do that? Think about it. I'm going to make you think about it now. See, when I started thinking only, I got some sense. We think doing a miracle is very great, very hard. I'm going to show you. Let's go to Colossians 3. We're going to use Colossians 3 as our test case, right? Because it's just easier because everything is close by there. Is doing a miracle hard? Is healing the sick hard? Is raising the dead hard? Or is doing the things that Paul says in Colossians 3 hard? Let's look at it. Colossians 3. The problem with us is we think miracles, that is some great show of power. This is nothing, you know. Well, let's look at it carefully. Colossians 3 verse 5. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. And then what are those things? Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil, desire. He uses four words to describe the same type of sin. Now, I didn't want to talk about this particular sin, okay. But what to do, Paul puts it first on the list and he uses four words to talk about the same thing. So I can't skip it, so let's talk about it, right? You take that first word, fornication, right? You know, basically, let's just take it as sexual sin, okay? Sexual sin. I know it's a, it's a tricky subject to talk about, but my question is, what is harder? Abstaining from sexual sin or doing a miracle? Think about it. Don't jump to conclusions. Think about it. What is harder? Is it harder to do miracles and have a great ministry and, you know, show the power of God in your miracles and your ministry? Or is it harder to abstain from this type of sin? There are many preachers who have had great ministries, done great miracles, the power of God has been manifest mightily in their ministries after years and years of ministry because of this one problem there. They've lost their entire ministry, lost their effectiveness, lost everything. Do you know stories like that? Forget about that. Just go ask David. Go to David and say, David, what's harder? Defeating Goliath or abstaining from? David defeated Goliath. 
he defeated every other and he defeated the lion and the bear everything else armies came against david he defeated all of them you know believing god for victory to for david that was like you know bread and butter it was so easy for him it was nothing big to believe god for victory to experience victory in war to experience victory in the, as a king was nothing for david he experienced victory just left and right he had victory everywhere but when it came to this matter he fell he had failure you ask david i think david will tell you goliath wasn't so hard friend maybe you haven't thought about it like maybe you're thinking well david you know are all of us living like david of course not all of us are not living like david but think about jesus when paul says sexual sin here he is not just talking about the act of sin he is even talking about the thoughts what did jesus say about adultery you remember that if a woman if a man looks at a woman with a lustful eye he has already committed adultery in his that is what paul is talking about now you tell me is abstaining from the lustful look harder or doing a miracle harder see some people have taken that lustful look you know and they've said you know well if you look once it's no problem the second time only it means you may be committing a sin third time surely means you are committing a sin then beyond that you've just gone into a different category you know No Jesus doesn't say that Matthew 5:28 he says if you look that means one time itself if you look with lust that's what it means one time itself if you look with you have already committed now let me tell you which is harder I tell you my friend doing a miracle is easier because these things you know these images that provoke lust are everywhere are on TV newspaper everywhere you turn they're trying to prove world is trying to pull you into that it's harder to overcome that temptation than to do a miracle you may not be you may not be convinced you know some people are thinking well at least you cannot tell me doing a miracle is hard but this is very easy if you are saying this is very easy you have not understood the seriousness of it. some people you know when 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 they see commands like this in the new testament what they do is some people take this approach ah this is very easy i i've been doing this all my life this is nothing for me you know there's one group of that those people they say it's easy nothing they are wrong you see there's another group which says this is very hard <laughs> how can anybody live like this how can anybody not even look one time lustfully you know so they look at it as very hard and therefore they say this and all cannot be followed this is some ideal you know you cannot do this you cannot live like this therefore what jesus was trying to say is well listen man aim for the stars and you'll shoot at the bark try to live like this and you'll at least get somewhere close to it yeah it's okay sometimes the lust will come and you will look with lust but it's okay you know at least this is a impossible ideal they think it's like that you see it's neither it's not easy no it is hard my friend it's not easy don't kid yourself trying to tell you tell yourself this is easy it is hard but at the same time it's not that it's so hard that you can't do it no it is hard but you can do it that is why you've been given resurrection power amen amen like i said i wouldn't have gone to this subject if paul didn't mention it first right what do you want me to do you need resurrection power to over, to live this type of a life to live where in, in, in to live in a way that in front of Jesus itself you are not committing adultery <laughs> in Jesus eyes to live as pure you need what resurrection power you need it my friend the world they cannot live like this i tell you they cannot live like this the sermon on the mount is not meant to be followed by unbelievers it's meant for believers these commands are meant for believers with resurrection power who have been raised up in their spirits for this you need resurrection not just for miracle you need for this also that's what i'm trying to say see how do you show resurrection power here now usually the way you show resurrection power is you confess and you believe right but this is a little special case right you can't be when this temptation comes you can't be standing there and you know confessing i got resurrection power and so no no in, when this comes the confession all should be done previously prior right before itself you should have confessed enough i got resurrection power when this temptation comes i can defeat it but when the temptation comes the first thing you do is run what do you do 
you flee paul said 1 timothy, 1 timothy 2:22 flee youthful lust literally run away that's what flee flee means turn and run <laughs> like joseph you remember joseph turned left everything he had and just ran out but to run you need resurrection power Amen. are you listening when the something you know the wrong is coming on the tv which is provoking you to change the channel you need resurrection you need it because your lust wants to say stay but the power in you use that to say no change see what i'm saying is for this you need resurrection power see maybe you're not convinced you know go to the next example Three, uh, colossians 38 see what is more difficult doing a miracle or this colossians 38 but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy language out of your now basically it's talking about anger and the things associated with anger starts with anger and keeps getting worse wrath <laughs> malice blasphemy <laughs> filthy language anger has come out of the mouth <laughs> now finally now what is easier is it easier not to get angry or let's say what is more difficult is it e- more difficult to do a miracle or more difficult to control your anger what's more difficult my friend more difficult to raise the dead or more difficult to control your anger you're driving down the street chennai you know you're driving properly following all the rules problem is here if you follow the rules that's when you get into more trouble you know if you break the rules at least you can drive peacefully but you're driving we following all the rules properly and the guy behind you is honking honking you know and uh, there's no place you can't move anywhere he's getting upset he's honking but finally he gets some place and he overtakes you with you know looks at you with an angry face and you thinking okay maybe you know it's okay you know and then you both go and you both are standing next to each other at the signal traffic light now even then you're trying to be very magnanimous and you're you're trying to think maybe he's in a hurry you know maybe he's had some bad day you know and so you're just keeping quiet you never did anything wrong he only but that fellow lowers the window and starts cursing you out right just shaming you in front of everybody at the signal is it harder to control your anger there or harder to do a miracle i tell you it's easier to preach here than to control anger over there i don't know you can ask other preachers see what they think that's what i think what is more difficult see we think only in the miracle great power is no 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 this you need more power you need different kind of you know some people have you seen you know they, they they'll say uh, have you heard about some people they'll say oh that man is a very good man you know very he's very good at heart but when he gets angry but don't he, he just ignore his words because that was just spoken in anger but he's very good at <laughs> see it's not uh, see it's okay to get angry even god gets angry even jesus got angry you remember in the temple he got angry he took a whip you know but what it's impossible but god and jesus they get angry with the right people <laughs> they get angry to the right level they get angry at the right time they show the anger in the right way controlled aggression right <laughs> you look at god he stores up all his anger and pours it out on the cross not on us right see anger controlling anger you see some people because they could not control their anger they have ruined their families the peace and joy in the home has been ruined because out of anger they spoke some terrible words and they tell me that uh, wives are not uh, very uh, easily don't forget is that true right that's what they tell me wives have a tendency to remember more right they don't forget so sometimes a husband you know just lashes out and speaks some things in anger but you know like one person said you know whenever i have an argument with my wife she gets historical the other guy said what historical you mean hysterical no he said no no historical she goes to the past history and brings up you know everything (laughs) 
you see <laughs> what i'm trying to say is uncontrolled anger can ruin families can ruin companies can ruin great things alexander the great you know what a great guy he was i mean that's why he has the name alexander the great you know he lived before the time of jesus and he extended the um, greek empire right so greece became a large empire because alexander the great went to new lands and conquered them right and in fact he's the one who spread through that conquering only the greek culture and the greek language spread so much that when jesus came on the scene it had spread so much that it was like english today everybody knew greek that is why because of alexander's great influence only the new testament was written in the greek language that was the kind of great man alexander the great was right there's a true story about him they say that once you know after a victory he was celebrating with his soldiers and sometimes you know uh, there is alcohol involved so the, the soldiers one soldier his best friend was just near him they were all celebrating drinking that guy drank too much his best friend you know and in a drunken state he began making fun of alexander and said some bad things right in a drunken state he insulted him in front of the whole army like that and alexander got so angry he took a spear near him just threw it at him and it seems his aim was so good that he doesn't miss it went right into his heart and it killed him and they say that after that alexander became very sad because he realized the guy did not say it in his right mind he was drunk that's why he said that he but that guy was his best friend he felt so bad that he killed his best friend they say that after that alexander tried to kill himself he felt so bad he could not get over that incident you see and you know it took a long time for him to get over that what i'm trying to say is alexander the great conquered great lands <laughs> did some great things couldn't control is lost the battle not enough to do super at your work you need to be able to control your not enough for me to preach here you know i need to be able to control my anger you see that is important to god you know i don't know why but that seems to be important to god in in colossians he talks about anger in ephesians he talks about anger go to read in chapter 4 in your own time it is important to god that you control your anger but to control this anger is not a ordinary thing you need what resurrection you want to know where to show your resurrection power show it at your anger say i got resurrection power keep it down you know <laughs> controlled aggression <laughs> show to the right person at the right place in the right way to the right level you see even in the world they got anger management techniques you know they say when you feel angry just bite your teeth or take a pillow and you know punch it or something you know or think about a happy place they say you know they they saying these things and with those techniques they are able to control their anger so much i tell you with resurrection power are we not able to control our anger do you think we can't control it we can what is more difficult i'm talking about what is more difficult what requires resurrection power more <laughs> look at uh, verse um, 12 the christian life is not just about abstaining from you know sexual sin or abstaining from anger uncontrolled anger no it's more than that it is not just leaving out certain things abstaining it is also doing some very good things that's what paul says in verse 12 as the elect of god 312 colossians 312 therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved put on tender mercies kindness humility meekness long suffering bearing with one another and forgiving notice the word forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another even as christ forgave you so you also must do forgiving what is more difficult doing a miracle or forgiving what is more difficult some people say you know they say i've forgiven you i've forgiven you but they'll rake up all your they'll get historical on you like we said you know if you ask them and say but you forgave me right they'll say yes yes i forgave you but i didn't forget it <laughs> forgive is different forget is what a nice argument so for we can forgive but not forget is that what paul is saying look there 
He says in verse 13, forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. How did Christ forgive? Did he say, well, I forgive you. I put your sins into the depths of the sea. But when I need it, I will rake it up back and just bring it up and show it. Is that what Christ is doing? No, my friend. If it's forgiven by Christ, then it's forgotten by, that's it.